Well, this is a great time to study the intersection of law and neuroscience because the law often, not always, cares about what people are thinking when they behave in bad ways. So, for example, in the context of homicide, it matters whether you're trying to kill someone or killed somebody by accident. Uh, and neuroscience, with its uh, tremendous advances in new technologies recently, is opening new windows on how you can learn about the brain and how it functions. And probably most spectacularly, you can learn about the brain non-invasively for the first time in history. It used to be the case that to study a brain, uh, you had to have it dead on the table. Uh, but now you can learn about how different parts of the brain are consuming oxygen in different ways during different mental tasks. The ability to do that opens up this tremendous window into how the brain is actually functioning in real people. People really often want to know why did a person commit a crime? Why did they act the way they did? And neuroscience hold some promise for learning more about how and why people behave the way they do. On the other hand, it's important to remember that it's not a magic bullet. We're not going to use a scanner that magically determines a person's level of guilt. We're not developing techniques that will make jurors and judges obsolete. What we're hoping to do is mine the rich information and the rich modern technologies coming out of neuroscience in ways that can inform the legal system by providing more information that can be taken into account alongside other important information behaviorally, psychiatrically, through witness testimony and those sorts of things to help people make decisions that are as reliable and as fair and as just as we hope our legal system can achieve.